one question I kept asking myself, why are we not growing? I mean, if the seed's going out, why aren't we growing? Why are we still sitting in the same place? Why aren't, why aren't, we probably, I'm not going to say it, I'm thankful for the, for the man tonight uh, of playing music. Didn't have to be praise and worship. They stepped up for game. They stepped up for calling to God. Um, I'll be thankful whenever they'll be up preaching and I can be sitting down. Uh, and, you know, praise God. Not that that's what, uh, my job is to go back, but my job is to continue forward. But there's a necessity for someone to be ministering. In. Where's the heart? Where's the desire to press on? I mean, because let's face it, I mean, there's been some outpourings of God here that's been quite miraculous. This is a uh, this is a mobile miracle. The way God has uh, been pouring out His Spirit over these last few weeks. Uh, last Sunday morning, you know, the uh, the last whenever we got to minister the Word, the weekend before. I mean, just powerful. How many, how many have been touched over these last few weeks? I see Sister Roxanne uh, minister last Wednesday, and she was stepping up her game. I see a, a growth and a desire to, to go on. And uh, but I mean, obviously there got to be more. It got there got to be more. And uh, the Lord led me to this scripture, Matthew chapter 13, verses 18 through 23. Um, Jesus is explain, explaining the parable of the sower. Because my question is, why are we not growing? <laughs> Why aren't we going forward for God? Why aren't we? Why aren't people suddenly get the realization? You know what? God wants me to minister. God wants me to preach. God wants me to sing. God wants me to, to do something that's stepping out that's out of the ordinary. I mean, let's. I mean, I, I praise God to be here. That uh, there's there is an overabundance of musicians and there's wonderful uh, ministers here. But I do know that there's a common spirit here is that there's always room for more. There is always room for more. There's always room for more ministers. There, there is a place for you to step up and to grow into. Uh, don't think that the position is filled because God has called us to go out and preach the gospel to the nations. And it doesn't matter if there's a million preachers. If God's asking you, if God's calling you, then it's your job to go. That's just the way it is. Anyways, Matthew chapter 13, verses 18 to 23. Check, uh, verse 18. Hear ye therefore the parable of the soul. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, if you got your word with you, underline that, understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, and catches away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. But he that received the seed into stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, and an arm of joy receiveth it, he received the word, that he had no root in himself, but dureth for a while, and when while tribulation or persecution arises, because of the word, or by and by he is offended. Or by and by he is offended. And also that received seed among the thorns, is he that heareth the word, and the care of the world, and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and become unfruitful. Underlined, unfruitful. But now here's our goal. Here's our place to shoot for. That he that receiveth the, the seed into a good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it. Underline that. Understandeth it. Understandeth it. Which also beareth fruit. Underline that. And bringeth forth some 100 fold, some 16, some 30. In my uh, in my little Jimmy Swagger commentary Bible, it said after understanding that said that they wanted to understand. There was a desire to want to understand. There was a will. There was something within them that desired to want to know more. And uh, just looking up the word understand, there was a few meanings and then one really jumped out at me. The word understand. To get the meaning, to know thoroughly, to have reason to believe, to accept itself. But then this one came out to me, it says, to take as meaning something not openly made known. 
said that ones don't bear fruit. They don't understand. The gospel is preached time and time and time and time and time again. And yet, there's those that don't understand it. They've heard about them when Jesus Christ died for sins, but they don't understand it. And how many knows that if there's something that you don't understand, if a person comes up to you walking and uh, talking to you in a different language, and they're talking to you in that different language that you don't understand, you're not going to get nothing out of it. But there's those that do understand it. Those that have ears to hear, let them hear. There's those that do understand it. So there's an understanding problem of why there isn't growth. Because people aren't receiving any understanding. But that didn't, I mean, because I can teach it out and teach it out and teach it out. And it still seems, I mean, I, I remember when we had the Sunday school class, and I, well, I think we must have repeated it a thousand times. We are saved by faith. And yet, it still seems like the fell on, you know, I'm not going to say it fell on deaf ears, but I'm looking for increase tonight. In John 14, 19-24, uh, the disciple Judas, not the not the Judas the one that betrayed, but the other Judas, asked the question. In uh, John 14, 19 through 24, it says, Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye sh shall live also. And that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and he in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them. He it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. This is Jesus speaking to the disciples. And then in verse 22, Judas said unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us, and not into the world? So how are we going to get it, and the world is not going to get it? How, how are we going to understand this? This is this gives you a great revelation. How are we going to understand it? But the world is a good thing. Verse 23. Jesus said, Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. Okay, love me, and love me not. Those that hear my word, they'll understand it, and those that don't. So, the Lord answered my question tonight, and that's the word that will come to convince you tonight, hopefully to understand it, not to be content where you're at, just being in church doesn't make you a Christian. Just being here, just uh, knowing the words, Jesus Christ died for me. He, uh, I know Moses and the Ten Commandments and all that. But a lack of love is the answer to our question. Why are we not growing? Because of a lack of love. Not of each other, but of Jesus Christ. See, we can, uh, we can sing what was the one song, Jesus loves me, this I know. Oh, how wonderful. But as we sing tonight, Oh, how I love Jesus, I can because we want to hear about God's love for us. About He died on the cross for us. But where's our love in return? It's almost like we're, we're lawyers that are uh, looking for a loophole in the Word. We're looking to get just skimmed by saved. We, we just want to do just enough. We want to come down to the altar and confess our sins. And that's over and out and go back to life as usual. Nothing changed. Nothing different. But that's not God's that calling. Those that love me is going to hear my voice. That's where the fruit comes from. Because if you love God, then you're going to want to do something for him. Isn't that natural? I mean, if you love somebody, and they ask you to do something for them, wouldn't you do it? Go forth and preach the gospel. Okay? Those some hear, and some don't. All right. If love isn't there, then there isn't going to be a desire. If there isn't a love for Jesus Christ, then you're not going to want to do anything for him. If you don't love him, then you're not going to be concerned about his commandments. You're not going to be concerned about anything there is to do with him. 
But if you love him, is there anyone in here that loves God? I saw a few names. What scares me is that the song that did go on. You know, th- you know, like, you know what? Those that, that ain't gonna want to hear it, they're not gonna hear it anyways. But uh, Ham Parker, he he said this one uh, story one time. I don't know why the Lord's doing this to me tonight, but he told me to relate a story about him when he was younger. Some of them. He said there was what they call gym rats. They'd be in the gym, you know, our kids wanting to talk about boxing. He said they'd be working out all the time. He said, we walk in. Like, anyone want to get in this far? Yeah, we're up for it. Up on into the ring. Let's go. They get their brains beat out. But they was ready to go. And you know what? After they got into the ring, they said, if they wasn't fast enough, you know what? I need to get a little faster. If they wasn't strong enough, I need to get a little stronger. If they got tired real quick, you know what? I need to work on my stamina. They got into the ring, and then they knew what they needed to work on. But he said there were some gym rats that would sit and work out and work out. Do you want to get in this part? No, I, I need to train more. I need to train more. And they never would get into the ring. They called them the gym rats. Getting behind the pulpit, getting up and doing music, is just like getting in the ring in a lot of ways in a spiritual sense. And you know what? Sometimes you can get your brains beat out. Hallelujah. You are. But you know what? You learn what your weakness is. You learn what to start fighting for. You learn what you learn where you need to start training yourself up. <laughs> Don't be afraid to step out for God. Is, is there anyone here that loves God? Come on. Come on. First John chapter four, verses seventeen through nineteen. Herein is our love made perfect perfect love, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. Verse 18, there is no fear in love. Perfect love casts out fear, because fear has torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. Can't be afraid of perfect love can't sound. There is no fear. And love, my God, tonight. Show the full son of God. There's those that are needing to strengthen you. They, they, they need their love to be perfected. They need to, to realize, you know, they don't how, how do you say that? How do you explain it? They don't understand it. Where in in the days of Moses, God gave him a law. He gave him ten commandments saying, this is holiness and this is righteousness. And even Moses couldn't do it. He couldn't cross over into Jordan because he disobeyed God. Even he, even Moses fell short. But through Jesus Christ came grace and mercy. Not, not because he, he magnifies himself, because he magnifies his Father. And he went to the cross praying, Lord, take this cup from me. He came and went to that cross for us. Us. Not us, personally, me, us, you and me, us. He died for us. He loved us. And that he showed an example of what love is. Love isn't self-seeking. Love isn't seeking my own will, taking care of all number one. But love was received from Jesus Christ. Now it's time to give it back. It's time to start loving it's time to start loving Jesus. And as you begin to love Jesus, you're going to love His commandments. As you begin to love His commandments, you're going to begin to love others as, you, as yourself. You're going to begin to love others as Jesus Christ loved you. You're going to begin to step out. You're going to find yourself like Peter. He says, when you was a young man, you came and went, how did you want to you, became, you became, became an old man, they found you. And you went where you didn't want to go. Uh, Roxanne here. She's, uh, I looked over at her and uh, when she was about to go up to minister, and uh, I saw in her eyes and they were white, that, that means there was no blood going on, there was high stress going on. She was highly nervous. And you know what? I'm sure, you know, we, we know through the word that God was stressed. There, there's things that we don't want to do that God calls us to do. When we step out and we do it anyhow, and against our flesh, 
against our own will, against our own desire, and none of this is going to magnify us. God is going to lift up the name of Jesus Christ. Don't be afraid. Let our love be perfected tonight. Can I get some more musicians back up? God has shown his love to me tonight. God has shown his love at the cross. God has not on your hearts. He's, he's been with you. He's been filled with the Holy Ghost. And yet, it almost seems like there's, there's no change. And it's not a lack of love on God's part. God help us. Let's begin to love. Let's begin to reflect what it is that God gave us. Let's begin to reflect what it is that we obviously never had before and we never understood. You don't know, if we surround ourselves with our family and we comfort ourselves in the love of one another. But sometimes it's in those lonely hours when God will get you off and alone and you feel like you ain't got a friend of the world. But God is with you. There's going to be times in your life when it seems like the whole world is against you. You know, it, but God is with you. And God loves you. In those dark times and in those dark places, begin to shake off yourself. Begin to do God's will. Don't keep staying. If that, that's, we need to grow. We need people to stand up in authority and say, you know what, I believe God's calling me to preach. I believe God's calling me to sing. And I don't know how to play guitar or sing. I don't know how to preach. I believe God's called me to, to do something, and I don't know how to do it, but God wants me to do it. That's what we call walking my faith. I certainly never knew how to preach. I guess I still don't. Know. Praise the Lord. Anyway. My God, it's time to step out and let the Lord show us. Let the Lord teach us. So help much we want to stand in our own strength and just do what we know how to do and stay in that comfort zone. And if it's something beyond us, that's for someone else. I would often hear my brother look up and say, he, no one's doing this and no one's doing that. And I said, Jack, don't you understand that God's not going to hard to That's your ministry. God's asking you to do that. You're looking at your point and your fingers with this one and that one not doing it. And God's asking you. But it's so easy to fault others for doing something, so not doing your ministry, for not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Tonight, there's ministers, there's men and women of God here that need to step out and step up. Now, obviously, you don't go straight from being saved to the pulpit. I mean, there's a place to learn, and there's a time to learn. I've been watching Bucky and and how, how he's been learning slowly, you know, like, and how he's been taking the correct steps, that you don't just jump and throw yourself to the front, but, but you learn, and you, you go through, you start out, you, uh, you start out in a small place, and you don't, you don't throw yourself out into the wide open, because Lord knows there's a maturity, there's a maturity that when we start from, and there's, there's a maturity where Uncle Lester's at that I'm certainly not at, there's a maturity where Lisa's at that I'm certainly not at. And, uh, but, but you got to grow. you got to step through the small steps and through the time. And the, like, you let the Lord saturate you. You, you stay in the, the will of God. You, you keep fighting for it. But first, you've got to be willing to step in the ring and fight. First, you've got to be willing to get up and get in there. You, you, got, you can't stay where you're at anymore. It's time. There's a calling for increase tonight. God is knocking on your heart. God's saying, now's the time. And it's... Oh, it seems impossible to. But it's right there. And that's God not before. Go ahead and be